expectations or even sin on your part or someone else's. But here's the good news. Let me encourage you with this as we wrap up today. You know, if it's a sin that's uh, causing you to really trip up, there's a remedy for that. Uh, Jesus died and rose again to make us right with God when we turn to him. One, uh, 1 John 1, 9 tells us if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, for mistakes and disappointments that cause regret, we can also turn to Christ. Let me take you to Romans 8.1. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ uh, from the law of sin and death. Now, what if your regret is caused by someone else? Well, you can free them and yourself through forgiveness because in Christ you have been forgiven. Colossians 3.13 says, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And then finally, uh, Romans 8.37 confirms that we have power over regrets through Christ who loves us. So if you're burdened by regrets about the past, give them to the Lord. Here's a final word, one that you won't regret from evangelist Billy Graham, who said, I have never known anyone to accept Christ's redemption and later regret it. Hey, I hope today's broadcast has been an encouragement to you as we talked about how to apply God's wisdom to your financial decisions and choices. Boy, we covered a lot of ground today. I'm so grateful that you share your stories with us and call with your questions. By the way, we'll do it all again tomorrow, so I hope you'll uh, come back and join us then. On behalf of my team today, Adam Suddeth, Jim Henry, and Devin Patrick, I'm Rob West here on American Family Radio, thanking you for joining us on Faith and Finance. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Come back and join us tomorrow. We'll see you then. God bless you. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. Association, a ministry with a mission to inform, equip, and activate people like you to strengthen the moral foundations of American culture and to give aid to the church here and abroad in her task of fulfilling the Great Commission. We couldn't do it without your day-to-day -day support. American Family Association. Find us online at afa.net. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. Friday that $39 billion in student loan debt would be forgiven for more than 800,000 borrowers and touted the over $116 billion spent in loan relief to over 3 million borrowers since he took office. The White House claims these borrowers are owed relief. These are borrowers who were never given the relief they were uh, promised. So that's what we saw with our announcement last week. These borrowers are owed this relief. Owed relief? 
Dr. Stuart Varney says this is more democratic entitlement mentality. It's the use of the word oh. Can you imagine this? This is incredible. Uh, we, she says that student borrowers are owed $39 billion. That's the word she uses, owed. This is the world turned upside down, isn't it? Do you have to pay your rent? Do you have to pay your mortgage? We've become an entitlement society. The new book details how far-left activists have infiltrated the nation. Christopher Rufo is the author of America's Cultural Revolution. He says although left-wing cultural revolution self-destructed in the third world, over time, it found a new home in America. Yeah, that's right. America's cultural revolution is a 50-year secret history of the radical left's long march through the institutions, first taking control of the universities, then the K-12 schools, and then spreading their ideas anti-democratically through society in that manner. And really, um, it's the story of all of us who woke up in 2020 and said, what happened to our country? A Massachusetts-based pro-family activist says he has no sympathy for the mayor of Boston, who has come under fire for sending a list of critics and protesters to the police. Boston's Democrat Mayor Michelle Wu is facing criticism after administration admitted to creating a list of her most vocal critics and passing it on to local authorities. A spokesman for the mayor told the Boston Herald, quote, the list was made in response to a request from the Boston Police Department after the mayor had been harassed and physically intimidated by individuals for several months outside her home at city functions such as the annual neighborhood parks coffee hours and other public events. But this move has raised concern over whether Wu and her administration were attempting to silence or intimidate critics, many of whom have protested outside of her home. Ryan Kamaker is president of Mass Resistance. I am not an admirer at all of the mayor of Boston. I think she's a, a horrible communist, if you want my opinion. And Kamaker says she has done terrible things for that town. Since they haven't been arrested, obviously they're not breaking the law. And she is doing things that are just off the charts horrible. So she can't act surprised if a bunch of people follow her around and protest her. I mean, she's forced, like, cops to lose their job because they wouldn't take the COVID shot. And just tons of horrible stuff. Kamaker says he can't stand Mayor Wu and is glad that the protesters are doing what they are doing. I'm Chad Roney. For Mayor from Family News, I'm Rusty P. American Family Studios was started back in 2011 as a way to advance the Christian worldview into an increasingly media-rich culture. Media is like such a powerful tool to communicate the gospel. I love writing stories, getting in my office, and just thinking, how can we portray this concept of who God's character is? And to get to use the gifts that God has given me is really a joy. AmericanFamilyStudios.net to today's issues, offering a Christian response to the issues of the day. Here's your host, Tim Wildman, president of the American Family Association. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's issues on the American Family Radio Network on this Wednesday, July the 19th, 2023. Thanks for listening to AFR. Tim Wildman here, and my uh, slightly better than average panel is with me again today. Uh, <laughs> Including, uh, including Ed Patagliano. Good morning, Ed. Good morning. I excel in mediocrity. <laughs> I said slightly a, better. Is that a contradiction? <laughs> I excel at mediocrity. <laughs> Fred Jackson, good morning, Fred. Yeah, I'm so happy we're getting a little better. <laughs> a little better by the time we're 80 years old, we're going to be top notch. Really better than average. <laughs> uh, all right, so thanks for joining us. Okay. Uh, we had Jim Caviezel, yes, that Jim Caviezel, the actor from Sound of Freedom and Passion of the Christ. He's supposed to be on with us in nine minutes. So, I don't need anybody to jinx this thing, okay? <laughs> because, okay, uh, because we, we've scheduled famous people before, and then they cancel. They don't show. Famous people things come up. Yeah. If you're a famous person, right. you're pulled in a bunch of directions. So we need, uh, we're going to trust that Jim Cabeza will show up nine minutes from now. We look right. forward to that interview. And we've been having a lot of Hollywood celebrities on here. That uh, Kirk Cameron yesterday. Yeah. Jenna Ellis, who 
we didn't know till she told us yeah. is in a documentary mm -hmm. essential church that's from uh, john MacArthur and his church out in california now we have jim caviezel on uh, fred and i've seen the movie sound of freedom mm -hmm. uh, which uh, we recommend powerful movie yeah a powerful movie and you're going to go see it or yeah i have plans to to go uh, see that this weekend if it's uh, still playing and then tomorrow, folks, Harrison Ford will be on <laughs> We'll discuss his new semi, semi blockbuster. No. Yeah. And then yeah. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, Tom Cruise next week. <laughs> Tom Cruise is going to come in and do a stunt here in the studio. <laughs> That's fact, right. He's going to jump over tables. Uh, Harrison Ford, you know, he's 80. <laughs> I know. And he looks it. I'm I just, know. I'm just going to, uh, you know. Yeah. He's still doing movies, so uh, tip of the hat to him. But you, you know, cannot he, stop Father Time. You think? You think when he's ninety-two, they'll be doing another Indiana Jones? <laughs> I think this is, <laughs> that was it. This is it. Indiana Jones <laughs> and, and, the, and, the, and the and the nursing home. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Uh, exploration in the nursing home of Doom. <laughs> Indiana Jones in the nursing home of doom. That's right. You're on something, man, right that's, there. That's Charring right. Harrison Ford. Yeah, hand me that whip. <laughs> Somebody else will have to crack it, though. That's, that's right. I don't have the strength. Oh, my, my back. <laughs> I cracked the whip and threw my back out. Oh. I threw my back out eating pudding. <laughs> Through a straw. <laughs> oh man, you are bad. Uh, I guess I started it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so now we're seven minutes away from Jeff the Diesel, <laughs> and he still hasn't canceled. So yep. we're doing good here on the program. Right. All right, Ed, you want to tell folks how they can uh, join us on what you call that their internet? Yeah, if you want to watch us do this radio program, I'm still not sure why somebody would want to, but we do have folks who do. You have two options. You can go to Facebook and search for today's issues, click through. You can watch the live video stream of this program, or you can go to our own streaming platform, AFA Streaming. Uh, that is streaming.afa.net, streaming.afa.net. And you can uh, watch this program and a lot of other uh, live streaming from some of our talk radio programs here on the American Family Radio Network. Anybody else? We got any? Uh, we don't have any other guests today, right? No guests today. Uh, all right. So Abe, Abe usually with us on Wednesdays, but Abraham Hamilton the third, but he's out this week. And uh, all right, Fred, what do you got? Uh, as we speak, uh, the Israeli President Isaac Herzog is uh, just about to stand up and address a joint session of Congress. Uh, normally, uh, such a speech would not get a lot of coverage, but there's been so much news leading up to this, driven by uh, opposition amongst Democrats to the state of Israel. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, one particular Democrat from Washington, uh, Congresswoman J Jayapal, she is from Washington State, uh, she called Israel a racist state and uh, she has been taken to task for that. Now, she, she walk, tried to walk that back, but unfortunately, she's uh, had controversy on this front before. Last night uh, in the House, there was a resolution passed by most in the House, with the exception of nine Democrats. They would not give approval for a resolution calling for support of the nation of Israel. Uh, former Vice President Mike Pence was asked about this yesterday. Uh, here's a little bit of what Jai Paul had to say about Israel and the response from Mike Pence, cut number five. We have been fighting to make it clear that Israel is a racist state, that the Palestinian people deserve self-determination and autonomy, that the dream, that the dream of a two-state solution is slipping away from us. Israel is our most cherished ally. Literally since the founding of this country, Americans hoped and prayed to see the people of Israel return to their historic homeland. We were the first nation on earth 
uh, to recognize the Jewish state of Israel in 1948. And, uh, and the comments by Jayapal uh, referring to uh, Israel as a racist state, well, I'm, I'm glad she walked it back, but it was a disgrace. And frankly, having another member of the squad yesterday refer to the racist government uh, of Israel, the, these, are, these are nothing short of rank anti-Semitic comments. Uh, and, and the time has come for the Democrat leadership in the Congress to take action against those who are expressing really dangerous statements. Hey, good on Mike Pence. Yes. Uh, I like that uh, full-throated defense of the nation of Israel and taking these members of Congress to task. So it was only these nine Democrats, those are the only ones who voted against this resolution. Correct, and I think they're support. all part of the progressive wing. And, yeah. And uh, Jai Paul is head of that progressive wing. But yes, all nine Democrats voting against this resolution would simply stated, we support the nation of Israel. And, and you know, it's, uh, it's sad that the Biden administration has been so... I would say cool towards the nation of Israel. I don't want to overstate it, but for example, never uh, the president never having spoken with <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu, no. the prime minister. No, uh, it, not up till yesterday. Okay. Uh, apparently, they spoke. Netanyahu is supposed to come to the United States later this year, but normally he is the prime minister. Netanyahu, he gets the first invite normally, uh, but it's not happening right now. <laughs> you know. These Israel, I've been there so I've been there many times, and you guys have been, and and and, and you know the situation on the ground. Listen, uh, is Israel? Israel is a it's a it's a Jewish state. It is. <laughs> okay, that's number one. Yes, it's a official Jewish state. Correct. Okay, number two. Um, uh, the. Arabs there um, have a have a good life for the most part. All right, I'm talking about compared to the rest of the world. Uh, maybe not the U.S. or some other Western countries, but Israel is a modern country. They they uh, uh, they have I don't know what the population. I would guess 20 25 percent are Arab, and uh, I work with Arabs all the time. When I go to Arabs, not all Arabs are Muslims, but the vast majority of them are. But they're not Jewish. And yet they live inside Israel and they have a life and they go to school and they go to work and they, they vote. They can be members of the Knesset. They can be members of the Knesset. They serve in the military. So um, it's just there are worse places in the world. Let's take China and their human rights violations. Okay, Israel is far better, uh, comparatively speaking, uh, than China on that on that front. You can also look at some Muslim countries, Iran. Yes, that are far worse on human rights than Israel. So this this obsession that the political left, not all, but a lot of the political left has with the far left, has with Israel. Is like Mike Pitt said. It's just they just hate Jews. <laughs> right. That's just all there is to it. That's that's the bottom line. They just hate Jews, and so anything anything that uh, goes wrong in Israel, or seemingly goes wrong, that's against the Palestinians or the Arabs, is uh, perceived as just exploited to some kind of international crisis, you know, uh, of human rights abuses, and that's just that's just not accurate. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, that's that's the way I that's the way I view it. Yeah, yeah. and in, in a lot of the in most Muslim countries, you want to talk about um, about individual rights. You can't carry a Bible in Saudi Arabia. You can't have a house church. You can't right. you can't uh, have freely express your Christianity in almost all right. of these Muslim countries. Right. So where are they on? The, why don't they? Why aren't these far lefties? Go after all these Muslim countries, right. or, or China. Of the oppression of women in yeah. Afghanistan, in, a, in Iran, in Iraq. No, not a bleat, not a peep, as they say. No. All right, uh, do we have a guest with us? Not yet. Okay. But he had not canceled. Okay. <laughs> Jim Caviezel. We're waiting on Jim Caviezel uh, to be on the program. 
You're listening to today's issues on American Family Radio. Next story, Fred. Well, Wait, just before we finish with that story. Sure. So the Israeli president, not the prime minister. The prime minister is Benjamin Netanyahu. Correct. But it, the the uh, president, Herzog, Herzog, he's the one. Is he speaking to a joint session of Congress? Right now, as we sit here, he's doing that, yes. Okay. You know. I'm embarrassed to say I've never, I never knew uh, Israel had a, a president. I don't even know what his role is. Is that it, what, it's, what? it's it's kind of a figurehead role? Uh, he shouldn't be called president then. <laughs> huh? You're not pre- a figurehead role is is king or queen or yeah. But a lot of in a lot of parliamentary uh, nations, it, the prime minister is the one that yeah yeah he's the one with the power. Yes. So I don't know. Why this gentleman is usually a person who speaks to the joint uh, to the to the Congress. I mean, a joint session, Senate and House. They're head of a state. Yes, they're not number two. No, or ceremonial. Mm-hmm. That's uh, be like. Would it be like um, the King of England? What's uh, Charles? Charles speaking? Well, I, I, I'm. I, I think. I'm looking up now, like uh, looking up uh, a webpage on the uh, Embassy of Israel. It's he's not just a figurehead. The Prime Minister has most of the power, but it, this says the President accredits Israel's envoys to foreign countries, accepts the credentials of foreign diplomats. He signs every law enacted by the Knesset and treaties and agreements with foreign countries that have been ratified by the Knesset. Uh, he signs so, a government it, picnics too. <laughs> well, huh? yeah, that's part of. It. I mean, that's like job description. Number it's 10. it's kind of it, it kind of sounds like the vice president in this country. Yes, yeah. there are there are powers. Right, there is some authority, but it's really completely lot. overshadowed by the president in this country. Yeah, and that's what it sounds like here with the prime minister and the president okay. of Israel. Okay. Um, not yet. Okay. You're listening to today's issues on American Family Radio. Fred, next story. Well, uh, at noon central time today, uh, if if people are off work, they're likely going to want to tune in. To uh, Two whistleblowers are appearing before the House Oversight Committee, two IRS whistleblowers. This is the ongoing story with regards to, and these whistleblowers, one of them, They've already uh, made declarations that they have been held back for years 